Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Anderson. Wonderful to have you all back with us. We're going to talk about becoming a millionaire yeah. God's way. And, and my I'm Dr. Wife. Maureen Anderson, and we are so excited about the journey of wealth that God has given us to build the kingdom of God. Amen. And one of the things that we want to talk about today is there is, uh, for centuries, it has been the vow of poverty. It's been so many different things about Christianity concerning prosperity, Amen. so many anti things. Amen. And, uh, in 1990, I actually wrote a book uh, that uh, I don't. I think we sold one copy. Uh, it was one pastor down in Puerto Rico that got a hold of it, and uh, I went down and preached for him. But anyway, yeah, it was way. the book's title was "Jesus Wasn't Poor." I know it's the first time powerful. that I preached it uh, back then. Yeah. It was uh, not received really well, but today people are much more open to what the scriptures well, are actually saying. Well, you know, say. you are a, you are an apostle. You have an apostolic call. It's been shown since you were 27 years, you've been moving, since you were 27 years old, you have been moving in that anointing and that power. So you're a forerunner. Because she said so. Yeah, but you are a forerunner. No, I, stop it. I got it. I got yes, it. You are a forerunner. Yes, so I, I do. God, God, get, God gets me out on the edge all the time. I yes, know that's exactly uh, right. Yes. And so I like to talk to him. So you, you have built four multi-million dollar uh, business is under the anointing of God, under the, the gift of God that he put in him. And now you're building the fifth. And it's going to be a multi-million dollar ministry because I it's, love it, how you brag it's about expanding me. the kingdom worldwide. No, I'm bragging about Jesus. Okay, okay, right. Not you. Keep it straight. Jesus. Keep it straight. Keep it straight. Keep it straight. <laughs> I like that. No, you're That's great good. too. You're great That's too. good. That's good. But I like, it's I like Jesus, it. I like it. Jesus in They'll get to know us this way. It's yeah. all good. But anyway, I want to talk a little bit about Jesus and... and uh, it's kind of interesting when I, I got the revelation, just the Lord speaking to me about Jesus was not poor, and I began to see and yeah, look at the scriptures yeah. a little bit uh, past the kind of religious notions that had been already taught and instilled in me through my life and through my grandmother and, and through many people uh, that saw it all differently. I mean, typically religion taught, oh, you know, Jesus was born in a barn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he, he didn't have to be born in a barn. You have to understand, they went to the inn. There just wasn't any room in the inn. So they, apparently they had the money yeah. to be able to pay for the, yeah. the room. So you're bringing it out, how that, you know, Mary and Joseph, they were from the lineage of of uh, David. David yeah. and, Solomon. and King Solomon was the richest man in the world, wasn't in he? In all of history, in secular all of history. or... or yeah. yeah, and so there's inheritance there that they had financial wealth, but they had to be wealthy because they were asked to go and pay taxes. Only the wealthy had money to pay taxes, and they had to tra travel to Bethlehem yep. because the prophecy said that he would be born in Bethlehem. And when and they, they had to go there, pay taxes in Bethlehem. Yes, they did. And Joseph... In order to be, he actually, there was a betrothal thing, so they, they came from fairly high up wealth because otherwise there was no such thing as a betrothal, paying a, a dowry know. and all that sort of thing. So we understand, not only that, they traveled on a donkey. The poor people ate the donkey, but they came on a Cadillac headed yeah. into well, Bethlehem. Well, today it would be a safari, wouldn't it? Yeah, a Ferrari. Ferrari. Not a safari, but a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> So, amen. And so they, <laughs> they came, they came, came to the inn, and then there was no room in the inn, and so all there was was a kind of a cave and a place that would be warm enough for her to give birth to Christ Jesus. Yeah, and it was Bethlehem. because he didn't make reservations. I can't he believe the, you don't make a reservation. You know, you've what? done that. That's right. We've gotten, and then we had no reservations. We couldn't. That's we. One Christmas Eve, we couldn't find a place to stay. That's right. I remember. Yeah, that. we had to. Anyway. We had to eat at Denny's. <laughs> no, hey, we, ate, we ate at Denny's. No <laughs> reservations. That was funny. Was that? <laughs> Quit. Anyway, <laughs> uh, they're getting this. So here's Jesus. Born in <laughs> we did, did the we? barn, so to speak, and we we have all of this stuff, and then religionists come up with this funny thing that we celebrate with the the what, three wise men in in the manger. They didn't come for two years. They've been traveling two years after they saw the star. So he's already two years old, and he's and Jesus is already living in a house. The Bible says yes. when they showed up, and there was not three. Because yeah. three people carrying any kind of money from 
India or China, the wherever they came yeah, from the east, from the east yeah. they would have been robbed, blind, and killed on their way. So yeah. they had to come in a massive caravan. They came That's the only way they yes. ever traveled was yes. massive caravans. Yes. And so they traveled in. In fact, they were so wealthy that when they came to Herod looking for the child, <laughs> Herod got jealous because he was... The, the king was going to get have. the money. Yeah, all this wealth that they were bringing. Man, he was so really upset about yeah, it, going so to the king Jesus instead yeah. of him. Yeah, so you know what he said? You need to come back this way on the way. But they had a dream, they had and dream. God said, "Don't go back the same way you came." No, because no. it would not be good for you. See, there's God. God just moves in the supernatural to lead us in the right direction and to Always. protect us from the enemy. That's exactly yeah. right. So, so the. The, they came with gifts, the most expensive, gold, silver, myrrh, they came, frankincense, they came with the most expensive perfumes, like... But they, they had lots of it. But they didn't come with a bag of quarters in Chanel number no. 5. They came with so much wealth yeah. that even if he wasn't wealthy before they got to oh the house, he was wealthy after they left. Yeah, and... God gave Joseph a dream. Get out of here right now. Go to Egypt. But he lived on the in Egypt on the Riviera there yep. uh, uh, for as many years as they had to. And he and who can live there and not work and have money to live? And we know that they lived great. They did good. And until, then he came home. Until Herod died, they right. had to, they had to stay there until he was gone, so they could. Because he come killed back. all of the two year old children know, trying to find Jesus, horrible. but they had to get out of town. But and they did. Yeah. So you have to think about it. Who can just pick up and leave during the night and go to a, a, a new place and be live in, to live in luxurious living unless you have wealth? That's exactly. They right. had wealth. There was no... No, nope, they had so lots of wealth. When you start looking at it and you start looking at the Bible in, from the prosperous side, you see tremendous things taking place. In fact, uh, the first miracle that Jesus does yeah, but, is interesting. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, we <laughs> want to talk about... We go back to his when he's 12 years old. Yeah, you can talk about that. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. Because he, he, if he was oh, a... Oh, I know what I was going to say. Okay. How can, the, how can the Word of God ever be poor? That's true. The Word of God can never. I mean, the Word of God, Jesus, right? The Bible says He built he, everything that exists, He built. Made by the Word. Made by Nothing the Word. Nothing was made except it was made by the Word. Yeah. So how could the, so the Word the ever word be poor? The Word could never be poor. Yeah. But the devil wanted us to believe he was poor. He wanted us to believe for poverty so we could not expand the kingdom. the kingdom worldwide. That's exactly and right. you got, it takes money. That's it takes exactly money right. to, to put people on television. It takes, uh, it takes money to build a church. It takes money no, to, to build orphanages. It, it takes money. And so, it takes money just to and eat. it's going to come from the believers, right? right? Of course, we believe for a transfer of wealth. Right, exactly from, right. From um, the sinner, the Bible says. But the thing is that the devil wanted to make us believe for poverty. That's right. So Joseph and Mary... Yeah. And Joseph, what you believe you get. Exactly poverty? Right. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, so Joseph and Mary <laughs> travel... They, they again travel for the Passover, yeah. and Jesus is along with them. He's 12 years old, and then they head out, and they leave church early. They didn't get the whole message, and they left early. And about two days out, Mary looks around and says, "Where's Jesus? I can't believe we lost the Son of God. I can't believe we lost." Said, so they had left him somehow, and then just noticed that well, they, so they had early. to travel back, and they found out that Jesus was in the temple. Handling Lord. the sacred scriptures. Yeah. Now, no ragamuffin <laughs> now is going to be able to get sacred. into the sacred the, scriptures. Yeah, the sacred That's scriptures. That's not sacred. Okay, the yeah, Bible. Yeah, that, the Bible is sacred scriptures. scriptures. <laughs> and so he says, hey. I know it's good, but it's not sacred. <laughs> not that good. <laughs> it's not a bad book. It's just a good book. This is the good book. It's, okay. So, so he, he's handling the sacred scriptures, and he's actually confounding the wise, which tells you he had had... Tremendous education, yeah. reading, writing, all he had already yeah. only the rich got that sort of thing to start oh, with. Oh, and he confounded the them in the temple when they finally got back, they picked up Jesus. And Mary was just impressed with his wisdom stature and he grew in favor with God. So it was his very powerful time in his life. Amen. And you know, too, you think about it, that when Jesus entered the ministry, he had twelve disciples to take care of and their families. 
who has money to take care of 12 people and their families, you know, making sure that... Well, it's pretty interesting because, yeah. you know, when they, he picked a, and walked past uh, John and, and uh, John and Peter, who were yeah. business people. In fact, all they had 12 their fishermen business. were business people. They were. You know, most people would have gone down, like Jesus would have went down to Christian unemployment line and see if he could find 12 unemployed people to help build the ministry. He didn't. Now, some he picked business people. Yeah, some unemployment are not lazy. I they know, I'm not saying that, that, but he did pick people that were headed into success. Yeah, they were doing something. They were doing they something. They were doing something with their finances. Because they could build. Yeah, they could build. And so he picked up 12 builders. Oh, yes. Ooh, grab a hold of this word. This word will change your life. You get what you believe in life. The whole kingdom is about faith. Well, so, think, think about John and Peter. So he, the enemy, you think about this. The enemy wants us to believe that Jesus was poor because you true. get what you believe. If you believe for poverty, you live you can be in poor, poverty. Poor as you want to be. Yeah. And you have to see. We, we did that once. We, we believe for did. poverty. We we're, were so poor so we didn't have a poor. car, we didn't have nothing. Well, we were told that. Religion well, said yeah. Jesus was poor we're and we still needed happy, to but be we're poor. poor. We were happy because we knew Jesus. But the thing about it also is this, is that the wealth is, uh, you know, I, I say this, you know, uh, one side of the coin is the love of money is the root of all evil. We don't love money. We love people. But the other side, and that's, you know, the, this side is greed. But the other side is, is the that ability to help. To have the finances to help people in need, to build the kingdom, to build the orphanages, to take care of the widows, to uh, build a person that their house burns down or storms come and they have nothing. And, but then out of the generosity that you provide, God gets the glory. They thank God for it. I remember a time, I got to tell you this, okay? Jesus wasn't poor, okay? Amen. So, we are coming out of the poverty. We're quoting the word. We looked up the scriptures. We made the tapes. We were, back then there was tapes. And uh, I wrote out the checks for mission works. Yes. And I had like five of them, different checks going to the missions. We didn't have the money at the time, but by faith, I'd written it out, believing we're going to send it. Put it in envelopes. Yeah, and I'm closing, I'm folding clothes, and I look, and those envelopes are gone. And I go, Tom, Tom the envelopes are gone. He said, oh, I mailed them today. <laughs> we didn't have the money. We didn't the have the money. money in the bank. So, so, so funny. So I'm doing dishes, and you come over to me, and you say, we are $500 short for, to pay our bills. And we didn't tell anybody. We didn't say a word. Didn't say nothing. We went to church on Sunday, and somebody came up to us with an envelope, and he said, God told me to give this to you. You got in the car, and there was $500 in that uh, uh, $100 Cash. bills, five of them. Oh, my goodness. Who got we the glory? God Who got the glory God when that got happened? Glory. God, God glory. did. Only, only God can do God that kind of stuff. God gets the glory. So having money to build the kingdom to help others is now the voice of God's love to people. God loves me. Amen. So Peter and John, okay. <laughs> Jesus you. walks by, they drop their nets because they had hired men. They had a massive business and operation going. Yeah. Later on, we see Peter say, I have not given up everything for you, Jesus. Peter, you're not quite telling exactly the truth because when you doubted Jesus and even being a friend of his at the cross of Calvary, yeah. you went back to your business and Jesus had to go find you and you were out fishing in your own boats. So, you know, you have to understand that they were business people. The businesses continued to, to pay them and make money for their family and et cetera. And so, you know, they didn't go into the ministry poor. People need to understand. Yeah. And, and, and Jesus had a treasure. I mean, he had somebody taking care of the money, even though he was a crook. Uh, uh, yeah. he, 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 he could probably pull some money out because there's so much money there that he didn't miss it. it. Jesus knew he was stealing. Somehow the accountant wasn't doing a good job, probably, whatever, yeah. whatever the But day. anyway, he had enough money to have a, a treasurer. <laughs> exactly. Well, he had lots of money. Jesus well, had great wealth. Well, the reason that we know that is uh, if you just go jump over a little ways in his life and see the feeding of the 5,000. Yeah. When he went to the feeding of the 5,000, he said, well, one of them, Andrew says, 
Should we yeah. go into town? Yeah, and, Philip. Or Philip. Let's say we go into town and buy all yeah. of the food and feed all these people. Jesus said, feed them. And, and Jesus said, no, that's not. But the fact that he could say that, I mean, there was no way they could. And, and they, they didn't, didn't have a truck system that could haul that much no, food no. out. But there Phil, wasn't a restaurant that had that much food. Philip knew they had enough money to they do it. They had enough money he to do it. He said, oh my gosh, though, it's going to cost at least a year uh, salaries yeah. here. So anyway, but Jesus was able to take two fish and five loaves. That's it. And multiply it to feed probably 15,000 people. people. Yeah. So, so we he, see God, he, doesn't, he God doesn't think about just enough. He thinks about too much. Okay, and how could he do that? Because he, Jesus, had a mindset of wealth. Absolutely. On this earth. He believed in the wealth of the kingdom. He knew just pray over it and it's going to multiply Absolutely. He knew it. He, he just knew he when doubt. Peter helped him, you know, with his boat, lo loaned his boat and, and so that he could preach the gospel. Then Jesus said to him, and, and Peter had fished all night. And, and Jesus, Jesus preached said, all night. Yeah. No. Fish, right. Peter fished all night. Yeah, did I? Okay. I don't know. Whatever I said. G Peter fished we'll all night today, and got right? nothing. But he said, you know, he said to Peter, uh, fish again. And he said, at your Middle word. of the day. Yeah, I wet your word, but it's impossible to catch anything now. And he got two big loaves uh, of uh, uh, fish. He, he got two big boats full Look, of fish that was so much. They're about much. to sink. They're about to sink. See, That's how God But you know, how come much. Jesus could do that? Because he believed in great wealth in the kingdom. That's exactly right. He, he, he just believed it. Even God back, wants us to believe like that. And he wants us to believe for too much. Too because much. Because then there's such an overflow to go into the kingdom yeah. and building the kingdom. And it isn't Advance something we even miss. It's just, it's just exciting to be able Amen. to help and oh bless my people. God. Amen. And you go back to the first, uh, his very first uh, miracle that he did I was know. he went to the wedding feast with his mom. And they're all sitting around in a circle and they ran out of wine. And, and so it was a wealthy party. Very wealthy party because it was in Canaan. And Canaan was very wealthy orchards and areas of grapes and vines and, and wine and etc. It was a very wealthy area. He was invited to be part of a very wealthy wedding. Yes, he was. was. Going, and they would go from guest to guest and say what they were going to give to the bride and groom. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it wasn't, they said, oh, we're out of wine. Mary says to Jesus, well, make some wine for him. Jesus said, it's not my turn, not my time. They're going around in an order. And she said, just make some wine. Well, you obey, Mama. So he, he calls for six jars. These are 30-gallon jars. Yeah. He well, said, water. fill them to the brim with water. Water, yes. And he prayed, and they turned into wine. So yeah. this is 180 oh, yeah. gallons of wine. He never did anything he small. He didn't do anything never. small. Never. Oh, yes. goodness. Yes, yes. I think we need to get rid of those words saying small. Tiny. Yes. Nah, we don't need them. Abundance. abundance. Those are the words. Abundance word. Well, that's more what, and more life and life more Jesus abundantly. That's what Jesus said. Life and life more Yeah, abundant. yeah. And you're giving. He yes. says, what does he say? The windows of heaven open to you, the floodgates. And that's so it. much, so much blessings that it knocks you over. It's too much. You can't take much. it all. It doesn't that's say knock you over. But that's how I see it. Like, oh, you know, I felt a flood does. And it's so much to build the kingdom. That's it. Absolutely. And then oh, the, yes. the next story that comes to my mind is Mary Magdalene comes in with a jar of alabaster, this wonderful perfume I that know. was worth a full year's salary also. And she breaks it and opens it and puts it on Jesus' feet, yeah. and, which is Pours his walk and our walk and, yeah. and such a refers to a lot of different things. But nonetheless, she dries it with her hair. And so... The, the disciples, especially Judas, we could have used that money for the poor. What, what, okay. what are we? What? Jesus said she's done something very important. In yeah. other words, giving is that kind of thing to God. That's right. Giving is so critical and so important because he knows that when you do, God is able to get it back to you multiplied. Amen. And it's, that's how the blessing just continues to flow because we're willing to give. And she gave that much. Besides the honor that she gave to God or to Christ Jesus That's in right. the circumstance and the situation. So we, we see a number of times where, where these yes. things actually transpire and, yeah. and actually happen. I think about the woman, Jesus standing at the front of the church 
uh, checking oh, out to I see how much it. money was coming in. Oh, that was such a problem. And so there's wealthy people yeah. who gave thousands and thousands of whatever shekels or dollars or whatever, however you want to look at it. But then there was a little woman that came and gave a widow's mite, which maybe was one or two cents. Yeah. And Jesus said she gave more. Than all the others. Why? She because gave it it all. Heart. she gave it all. She gave it all. It was her all. heart. Is the heart. Yes, and you can just imagine the wealth that she stepped into. Oh, that's why Jesus didn't. When you give it all, it's supernatural giving. She gave supernaturally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was a that was a real learning session for me as a pastor and, and uh, receiving offerings at church. I really struggled with, I would, uh, in the early days, I thought, I'll just finance the church the best I can myself. And I don't want to ask anybody for any money. That just they, should, they might need to buy shoes for their children, and they might need to do this. God needs to and set God you got free a hold of, of my heart and said, well, "Wait a minute!" Actually, yeah. I was skiing down a hill uh, in northern Arizona, and the Lord said, "Until you learn how to receive, you're never going to build my church." And I went, "That's a truth." What? That's Until a I learn how to. Oh, okay. Uh, they're not giving to you; they're giving to me. He said. I went, "Oh yeah, that's right." How am I going to bless them unless they give? I went, "Oh." Yeah. And the Lord just began to help me with my heart well, and understand really... that when I'm asking them to give to the kingdom, they're going to be blessed as a result of it, not come up with less. That's right. So that they can buy the shoes. Exactly right. Yeah. There's... And I remember it at that time in our own life, you know, work, working through, because our first word that we got when we moved out to Arizona when I was 30, I keep saying, was... Uh, seek my prosperity for the sake Are you of the over house 30 of yet? the Lord. Oh. And so we, we were all in. Oh, for God, we can do that. And so we had to learn the scriptures because we were coming out yes. of religion where we were living in Wisconsin, moving here, and uh, God was setting us free when we got here about religion. God is into Charles Capps books. God is into Kenneth Copeland and Gloria's books and, uh, uh, and getting us into... Uh, Jesse's and all these people's uh, material and, and Kenyon. Oh my goodness. And so out of that, we were, we were committed to that word. And, Absolutely. Uh, and so we've been able to see God build four multi-million dollar ministries. Now we're on our fifth that we are building, just beginning just in beginning. the beginning days. But it, God is expanding it because we have a call of God Amen. to cover the earth with the word of grace and truth, truth to and take truth the millionaire prosperity. book all over the world to bring people out of poverty. We have a call that, that's a passion in our heart since we said yes to that word. That word has grown and grown and grown in our life. And we want to see people be able to have the finance yes. and the wealth to fulfill their destiny in the kingdom, to expand the kingdom worldwide. Absolutely. And to be able to to be able to do the things our heart cries out to do. And so praise God. So thank you, Jesus. So God's plan is for abundant life. And yeah, that's right. That is health, wealth, joy, and you know, peace, it and highly does. favored. That is his plan. That, and it started out believing that Jesus was important. I mean, I know we got the word way ahead of you getting that revelation. Yes. But as we meditated and were committed to that word, you know, Timothy you know, Paul writes to Timothy and says, don't forget the words that were given to you through the prophets, through the that's elders. That's exactly right. So yeah. That, yeah, that's right. You, that meditate on it day and night so that people will see, that's a, that's a paraphrase though, see the progress of you. Well, we've been meditating on it since then. And, uh, and, and it just keeps expanding and expanding and expanding and hearing all these testimonies from people. That's exactly yeah, right. I know. I, I was thinking about another one. It was uh, they brought a sick man to Jesus' house. So we know he had a house. I, I know. And they tore On off the his roof. And, and they tore off his roof. So yeah. we know Jesus wasn't upset. It was his roof. Yeah. And they let, lowered the man down. He got healed. We know that story. But after that, uh, his, his mother came to the house and his brother. So we also know that it. She knew where he lived, yeah, so he had a home. Yeah. And she got there, and there's a, a story that goes with it. But after the meeting's over and the man is healed, Jesus goes out and sits by the lake. So it was a house by the lake. I know everybody would love to have a house by the yeah. lake. So, you know, any way you look at the scriptures, mm -hmm. if you really get intense, look closely, it reveals Jesus was not poor, poor. not ever poor. 
The only time Jesus experienced sickness, poverty, harm, or hurt was on the cross of Calvary Amen. when he paid the price for your poverty, paid the price for your sickness, paid the price for your sin, paid the price for mine. This is the only time he experienced it. In fact, that was the point of time when darkness ruled on the earth for three hours until he was put in the ground, resurrected to new life, and gave us dominion and authority back on this earth and took everything that the enemy had stolen and wants to give it all back to us because Jesus has it in his hand. Yes, in this scripture, 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says this, for you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, oh my gosh, how come we have never saw that? Though he was rich. Oh my goodness, can you imagine okay. that? Yet for your sakes he became poor. Where? At the cross the of cross. Calvary. He became poor. That you through his poverty, through knowing that he, he already took cross, that poverty, might become rich. Oh my goodness. That and that is financial wealth. Completely. Quit being religious. Get rid of that. Realize money uh, to give to expand the kingdom worldwide is not evil. The Bible says... You know, you know, seek ye first the expansion of God's kingdom worldwide. We know that that is one translation. And his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. Religion is uh, something that steals your responsibility for life. It does not encourage you to build and to do and to accomplish. Instead, it binds you up. Jesus came to set us free. Yeah. so that we are free to build the kingdom of God, free to live life to its fullest and experience the very best and goodness of our God. Yeah, and run our race. And run our race. That we were born to do. For such a time as this, you were born. Hallelujah. Exactly. You want to do we salvation need to, prayer? If you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive him right now. God wishes none to perish, Whoops. but all okay. should come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Not talking religion here. We're just talking about life through Christ and the goodness of our God. So if you Amen. just reach out for Jesus, he'll change your life. Don't let religion get you, just let truth teach you. And so just pray with me right now and speak it out loud wherever you are, uh, wherever you're listening Amen. right now, just repeat after me. Dear Father God, Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive of me. All of my sin. Of all my sin. I ask you, dear Jesus. I ask you, dear Jesus. Come into my life, come, come into, into my heart, be my Lord, and, and my Savior, Savior. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. And Amen. tell somebody that you just received Jesus. He said, if you acknowledge me before man, I'll acknowledge you before my Father which is in heaven. I encourage you to do that. Let us know right here. Yeah. Call in, write in. Just, uh, we'd love yeah. to hear from you. Yeah, we go to our it. Word for, the Word for Winners. The Word for Winners. Yes, it's only our the web word. page and you'll get the materials you need and learn more about this ministry. Become a partner. Thank you, name. and we will see you next time.